Right here from Four Guys Guns, and if you have ever danced with the devil with a soldering iron and a Glock frame, maybe you just wanted to get super custom. Maybe you decided to take all the parts that are hanging around and do something with them when it comes to Glocks that is literally becoming the AR-15 of the pistol world. What do you do? After its long hiatus of almost two years, Lone Wolf Distributors has revamped and re-released to the market the Timberwolf frame. Why do you care about the Timberwolf frame? Well, for one, it gives you so many more options, whether you want to build from the ground up, whether you want to get your stipple game on point without the cost of a full-blown Glock, or maybe you've upgraded so many Glocks, you have all these parts kicking around and you just need to do something with them. There's a wide, wide, wide availability out there right now when it comes to barrels, sights, slide packages, RMR, delta point cuts, whatever you want to do, and all these little whiz-bang add-on extras and services and fees and things you can do to really make one your own. Lone Wolf has done an amazing job right out of the gates with giving you just about everything you need in one tiny little package, not to mention actually super affordable. It's only I think like 225 or 230 bucks for this whole situation. Everyone's always wondering about value packed and how much can I get for my dollar. For 220 something dollars you get a bunch of the stuff that you would have either thrown out already or had to purchase on top of. So couple key features that I actually genuinely like are the fact that there are no finger grooves and the texturing is very much there, but it's not like at your level of Springfield awkward waffleness. No grip zone. It feels really, really good in the hand. You don't lose any kind of slip or play. And I think it would look cooler if it was stippled, but it doesn't really need it. Built-in undercut swell, you know, they say for gloved hands, but in reality it lets you get a much higher purchase on the actual frame itself, as well as a itty bitty dovetail, which works wonders for you. And it's not like this super extended bolt-on shenanigans like you see out in the market. It's built in and it's just right. Now, when it comes to the 19 size frame, if you don't like this little jut out, uh, I tend to like it because it allows my pinky to kind of wrench down when I'm aiming the gun, but if you don't like that, with a Glock tool or, you know, AKA ballpoint pen or small tiny screwdriver, things like that, the magwell comes off very easily. It's just one drift pin all the way through, back comes off, front comes off, and you no longer have that to worry about oversized magazine release, otherwise known as the Gen 4, instead of the nubbin of pleasure that is the Gen 3 tiny little DJ Dills mag release. Built in undercut, usually you have to pay extra for that. Back strap, same situation, and it comes with both a large and the small. The small does look a little goofy. I'll be the first person to tell you that it doesn't look like a normal Glock shape, but in the hand is definitely a lot different than your standard Glock. With two little prongs or a small flathead screwdriver, this little cover right here that comes snapped in ready to rock and roll makes a Gen 4 compatible frame. It also ships with pretty standard Glock internals, but I gotta tell you, when you put your favorite new 19 upper on it, or depending on which model you get, 17, 34, it has a much more, I would say, solid feel, almost like a Gen 5. And you can hear it. I'll put it right next to the microphone. It's Almost no play, almost no take up, but it's still essentially a stock trigger and beefed up internals that are still the stock format, if that makes sense. You're good to go. And they make it for literally every configuration from 17 with a 19 frame or you know 19X kind of style. They even do 10 mil, 357 SIG, 40 cal, 230 bucks. Not a bad racket. One of the things that we did, and you should discover on your own journey of creating, I made this. The way in which I have mine configured is I had this Syndicate S1 slide kicking around with an agency barrel and the agency optic system or AOS. This allows me to actually flip this around for just irons or irons and optic. So we went kind of full Gucci on this and I gotta tell you, 
This runs very well. However, in the process of doing all this, we did find that just like your good enough AR builds of basement parts or random parts, on paper, things are engineered to ma made up and match up and work perfectly fine. In the real world of 3D metal parts interacting and working together, uh, this ran into a couple hiccups. Different barrels, different uh, magazines, different ammos. You're gonna find some finicky things. This setup seemed to work the best for us. We did have some issues with the uh, Magpul, which really kind of upset me because I believe the Magpul ones were the issue with the old Timberwolf frames, but these, whether empty or full, in and out very nicely, seat very good, but for some strange reason on every barrel we tried, that was the weak point. It kept kind of sticking into the actual ramp. Whereas the factory Glock mags, as usual, you know, they'll feed every time, but that one was a little bit more stickier coming in and coming out. The ETS mags also worked actually just fine. No, I didn't try KCI mags because I'm not that broke. In a world where Polymer 80 had filled for you do it yourself, kind of make your own Glock, one of the biggest hangups was holsters. So we tried one of my personal favorites, which is Black Point Tactical. <sighs> Black Point Tactical. This is a dual point. If you ask me in the comments, even though I put it right here on the screen, I'm not gonna answer you. This is a Black Point Tactical dual point for the second time. Not a problem at all. No hangups, no sticking, good to go. Uh, crucial is another, yeah, Crucial Concealment. This is actually from Black Point Tactical as well, and it's a super affordable option that's ready to ship instantly. There's no like lead time or anything. That one also works great. One of my personal favorites, if you want to do things like running with a light and stuff. This is from QVO. The QVO worked perfectly fine. Uh, I have this one set up with... I have this one set up with an X300U, so it works with all the 19s and 17s and stuff. They do a great job out there in Las Vegas. And speaking of lights, this... We did not test a stream light because I don't run them or an O light because I don't run them. This one is nice and firm and works exactly how it's supposed to on the actual frame itself. You will notice there's a little bit of white tape on there. And if that was an actual issue in the real world, I would, uh, I would bring it up. But I've seen people use this little trick on factory Glocks as well as worked on Glocks. Sometimes it's just polymer variants. Sometimes it's light variants. Sometimes it's a combination of the two. A couple strips of electric tape for all you. Why does my light wiggle and I can't fix it? Snugs it right up. Good to go. So all in all, whether you're looking to actually fix that arts and crafts time you have with the soldering iron, or maybe you want to build something from the ground up. Maybe just like your ARs, you have all these parts and menagerie of trinkets hanging around that you can put on a Glock if you only had an extra frame. The Timberwolf fits a lot of those holes for you. And I mean, you throw a stock slide on here, it's gonna run like a top. Be aware that if you're gonna tinker with all those fun things, you're gonna have to get Get a little crafty at times and that's just part of the nature of the beast when you come to create something either way why don't you go ahead and go have your own happy fun time get yourself a timberwolf frame and know that i've beaten the crap out of it and still seems to be working pretty good better than good in the meantime go check them out thank you for stopping by please make sure you like and subscribe i know we usually do that in the beginning but i don't know we're doing this for fun at this point Played a little bit too much with that soldering orange. <laughs> soldering orange? Yeah. Timberwolf. Timberwolf. Am I shiny? I feel shiny. <laughs> Sound like a valley girl. Oh my god. Yeah, like totally. Like totally. Like 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 like. like. <clears throat> beaver tail. Beaver tail. Different. I know doves and beavers look. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've had that booger on my nose the entire time. That you usually had to like search for. Um, undercut. You <laughs> stop laughing in the background. Nothing of pleasure, dude. I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about lady parts. I was not ready for that. <laughs> I'm watching you in the background like. I was not ready for that. I'm sorry, I was trying not to laugh. Holy hell. All right, I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> <laughs> the little mag release that's like for DJ Diddles. Um, no? Sure. Is that acceptable? Yeah. All right.
all does that. So that your beaver tail. <laughs> Well, you said it. You said I, I know I said beaver tail, but I'm still thinking about nubbin of pleasure. Yep. <laughs> it's forever seared in my brain. Thank you. Agency optic system, which basically makes this interchangeable, so I can have just a... Beep, boop, beep. Uh, don't stare right at it. Metal parts intermingling with each other and producing stuff. Jesus. <laughs>